When was the first time you saw Joe Burrow, and what was your initial impression? Probably the first time I, I heard the name was he was considering going to Cincinnati, the University of Cincinnati, before he went to LSU. That's probably the first time the name popped up. I've known his dad for a long time. I knew Dan and Jamie Burrow, his two brothers that played in Nebraska. Um, I didn't know that there was a Joe Burrow that existed, you know, until – until really he, he transferred to LSU and then he became part of the draft process. And um, that was really the first time he ever came on my radar, but, but I've known his family because they're all Nebraska alums and they went to Nebraska and, and his brother graduated right before me. So I, I've known the Burrow family for a long time. Yeah. My daughter sat next to him in Baltimore this weekend. She went to the game. <laughs> and bizarre. Yeah. I sent it. I, I actually sent it to Joe and I'm cause I DM him once in a while to wish him well. And in the process of drafting him, when you're sitting down there with your general manager and the Brown family, what could you share with them about the family before meeting Joe that, that were really positive aspects? Because my daughter was kind of blown away just kind of by the, the good natured, you know, really sweet people. Um, like, what did you share with the Brown family to say, like, you have to draft this guy? Well, you know, I, I didn't know Joe as well, obviously, so I had a hard time speaking to him. But um just son of a coach you know and and so you do your research okay what, what does that mean does that mean he's a football junkie he grew up he understands the game and and he's got that edge to him you know that you need to have and and uh those are those are some of the qualities that he did have once we got to know him so um you know just just uh it's tremendous family you can see why joe is the way he is and uh we're, we're really lucky to have him yeah he has kind of a brady and comparing anybody to brady is not great but there is um you know, Jay Glazer always said there, there's a little bit of an unhealthy obsession with successful people, wh whether it be if I'm a broadcaster, or you're in tech, or you're a football player. That I, I was talking to Mark Sanchez today, and he goes, oh, God, Joe loves football. Joe loves football. He likes the process. He likes practice. Um, in your years of coaching players, that's not true with everybody. Some guys don't love it as much, Zach. I mean, if I said to you, Joe loves it. What percentage of players in your coaching experience live for it like a Joe? He's uh, he's he's a little bit different that way. You know, he's got the right edge to him. And a lot of people do just love what football brings to their life. They don't necessarily love everything. They're talented and it's what's expected of them and they're good at it and they love the things it brings. Joe, uh, from my time around him, he's obsessed with the process, you know, every little detail. And, uh, you know, it's never perfect for him, which is great. That's what you want from your starting quarterback. And, and it just trickles down to the entirety of the team. Everyone's got so much confidence in them. They don't want to let him down because he's going to put himself to be in a position to be ready. And in his teammates, you can just get that sense. They don't want to let him down. And, and uh, that's the standard that we're looking for. Can you get in his ear during a game? You know, you'll hear these legendary stories. Hey, we drew it up in the sand or we did a little wiggle. We'd never practiced. Are you comfortable now occasionally going to a space like that where in a game situationally, you're like, Zach, try this, or he offers his opinion to you similarly to, to do a little wiggle maybe that it's off script? Absolutely. You know, we just have to make sure it's sound. Um, there's probably been times over the two years where, where we've gone to him and, and I just, Hey, are you comfortable with this? If we did this, can you see it? You feel good about it? Um, and that, that's one thing that, that I do admire about Joe is he's very honest and he's not one of those guys just going to yes sir you to death because you think that's the answer you want. He'll be very honest. I don't understand. I don't want to do that. I don't like that. Um, please do this. And, uh, that's the communication I want. You know, he's an extension of our coaching staff. It is different when you're talking to a quarterback at times, you, you want that clear and honest feedback and, and Joe's not afraid to give it to you. And, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, that to me is a fascinating relationship. I mean that you, I've seen it with other quarterback comes over coaches. Like you tell me what you see. Yeah. Um, a lot of quarterbacks, you know, due to the hash marks college to pro, it takes them a while to see the entire field. Um, could you tell that Joe could see it from his film at LSU did or did it did it take him time at practice because take me and the people listening to this I think a lot of people they just don't realize that's not a natural innate thing to be able to have somebody running at you and you can see four different receivers yeah. give me the process for Joe on that when he saw it why he's so good at it and when you first recognized it well I think for Joe um 
whether it's naturally or it, it came about in high school, he's just got such a high football IQ. It makes sense to him. Just seeing something for the first time makes sense on why it's happening. And so Joe playing in college, you know, the system they were in, Joe Brady came from the Saints. There was a lot of NFL concepts. So there was a lot of full field progressions. You needed to understand the coverage and then understand how the concept attacked it. And so you could see that on tape, how quickly it was going to translate to what we do, because there's a lot of crossover there with the West Coast offense. And so we, we had a good feeling uh, just from watching his tape, watching his 16 games or whatever he played, and then interviewing him. You could tell, hey, th this guy's got it. Um, he'll quickly pick it up. Our first training camp, you know, was the COVID training camp where he had no offseason. And uh, he hit the ground running when we put the pads on. And, and you could just tell this guy's going to be special right from the get-go. There's a fine line and I see it with Burrow, there's a fun, I don't know if the word's cockiness, but it's really likable. Like, I like him. Um, I think that means something. I'm not going to mention names, but there have been quarterbacks who are cocky, and I just, I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't know if I like them. I watched Brady and Peyton Manning and Eli last night on TV give each other crap. All of them I found incredibly likable. Yeah. I mean, like, like even in their, as Peyton was digging into Tom, I'm laughing. It's like a comedy act. They're, there's something about Joe to me. I don't want to reach here, but there's a likable, there's a likability about him. And I, I don't know what it, I don't know what that means or how it manifests itself on the field, but I see it in all of his interviews. What am I seeing? You're seeing a guy that really doesn't care what other people think. And so he doesn't feel like he's got to put on an act to impress people uh, just because he's in the spotlight. He's just Joe. And that's just his personality. He's confident because he puts in the work and, uh, you know, he doesn't run from that. Yeah, he's got the right edge to him. But but I just think the, the, the most important thing is he's, he's not out there to impress people. He's just he, he just wants to be one of the guys. Um, he's a guy that works hard. He plays well on the field and he's just himself. And uh, and and, you know, that's that's a that's a cool thing to be around.